Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And kick-starting off the press, we've invited Mr. Tunde Kolawole. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning, my sister. How are you doing today? Well, great. Happy holidays. Same to you. Hope you are enjoying your Easter. Yes, we are. Thank you. All May right. The sacrifices of our Lord Jesus Christ and reach all of us and cleanse our nation. Thank you. All right, let's begin with the nation newspaper this morning. It reads, Presidency, Kuka, clash over Nigeria, a killing field claim. Obasanjo Gumi, let special courts try bandits. Buhari's legacy in grave danger, Bakari warns. Ex-governors, senators own 130 Dubai assets. EFCC gets reports. Asman's early flight resumption plan shaky. Telecom sector takes hits from new SIM ban. Naira stable despite dollar demand pressure. Pope slams arms spending in time of pandemic. 20 policemen killed in March, says IG. And Buhari Mons activist Chukuma. Or new all law of worry. Uh, likely today, and April 10, a PDP Congress date erodes. Uh, still the same story, gunmen kill policemen, others in Delta and Kaduna State. Those are the stories on the nation this morning. All right, now moving on to the Punch newspapers. Uh, this one here says, uh, Nigeria's health in danger. Uh, Buhari pampers terrorists, and that's from uh, Tunibakari and uh, Bishop Kuka. Also, Buhari continuing with Jonathan's opaque subsidy regime he promised to change, says Bakari. It's strange rehabilitating terrorists and bandits and neglecting abducted school children, uh, Bishop Kuka is saying. And of course, in response, uh, Kuka did not speak like a man of God. Cleric's message lacks fairness, says the presidency. Also on the Pontius Morning, pension scheme records 62,596 deaths. Relatives paid 205.12 billion naira. Uh, Easter, Osimbajo governors and others preach unity and love. Obasanjo Gumi recommend special courts for bandits after closed door meeting. And federal government will reopen talks with striking resident doctors. Uh, and that's uh, from Ngige. Uh, I wish my husband could read tributes of those he criticized. And that's from uh, Joe Dumakin. Uh, wanted court is nabbed for killing policemen and others in Lagos. And we can also see on the Pontius Morning NDLA arrest traffickers with 564 million naira heroin at Abuja Airport. Amotekun rescues three Ondo travelers as kidnappers flee. And the last, well, last one I'll share this morning, Biosa sets up emergency centers as cholera kills 24. For the uh, Bakari, Kuka, and uh, uh, story here says, hits FG with damning reports on the nation. Fears over surge in casualties as doctor strike enters fifth day. Patients lament epileptic healthcare services. NAD won't call off strike until demands are met. An NMA can only intercede when government pays arrears. Fragile peace as banks on block MTN's USSD platform. Sheikh Sani advises Tunubu to learn from Abiola's travails. Terrorists kill five, injure one in Kaduna. And all Kogi athletes officials test 100% negative to COVID-19. Those are the stories here on the Guardian newspaper. On the Nigerian Tribune, Nigeria has become a massive killing field. Bishop Kuka is uh, quoted as saying, also, Nigeria in a state of emergency, its survival hanging, Bakari says. And also, uh, OBJ Gumi meets list over 20 solutions to insecurity. One special court to deal promptly with cases of banditry, kidnapping, unlawful carrying of weapons. And it also says, yeah, federal government must be proactive, secure necessary and updated intelligence to deal with organized crimes. A few others. Judicial workers begin nationwide strike tomorrow to shut down courts. Snakes and alligators taken over a Korodu government warehouse. Terminal and uh, freight uh, forwarders raise alarm. And uh, we can also see here Serap sues Buhari over 3.8 billion Naira, NAFDAQ and Health Ministry Hospitals funds. 
We can also uh, just quickly share the escalating debts may worsen social unrest and political, political tension. And that is from the United Nations. And uh, once again, we, the activists we lost in Odumaki, and that's from Femi Falano, Akintoye, and others. Those are the big ones on the Tribune. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, over to you now. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. <clears throat> Honestly speaking, most of the stories that you have on the front page of all the newspapers today are stories that uh, ordinarily one would have loved to comment on all of them because of the significance, the importance all those stories have to the well-being of the Nigerian nation. Uh, but because of um, lack of time, that is uh, practically impossible. Let me quickly address the issues that have been raised by Bakari and uh, Reverend Father Kuka and also General Lucia Gunem or Bassinger. The truth of the matter is that um, just like uh, Kuka has said, and then like Bakari, the face of the Nigerian nation is hanging on the cliff and um, we really require divine intervention for the situation not to explode before all our eyes. Now, to General Bassanjo's recommendations, is it a specialized court that is likely to give us security, stability, peace, and order in Nigeria? The answer is no. Why do I say this? It's like uh, when a man has a cancer and he begins to treat you with a ringworm, the reality will be that he will be scratching something in the face when he really should be addressing the issue, the fundamental issues of the cancer that he has. We are in this problem in security and the precipice in which the Nigerian nation is hanging for two or three reasons. One, the economy is in bad shape simply because this democracy is a money gospel. It is a democracy that this country does not have the resources to sustain. If we were a planning nation, we would have sat down I think like they did in Ivory Coast, and review not just the cost of this democracy, but the cost of governance, so as to bring it within the context of the resources that is available to us. But very strangely, too, we have continued to carry on as if uh, the resources will always be there to continue this uh, unsustainable political uh, a system. If you have a specialized court, in virtually all the local governments, if you have a specialized court, in virtually all the wards in Nigeria, to address the issue of insecurity, the issue of banditry, and uh, cultural clean arm robbery, urban banditry, and what have you, that is never likely to give us a solution. The solution would be to cut down the cost of governance, on the course of this democracy, so that we can free some resources into developmental uh, structures of the Nigerian nation. And the industries can begin to work. The infrastructures can be rebuilt. Our schools can be put back in the shape they ordinarily should be. So that is one. Secondly, you will see, especially if you are one of those who interact with our security system, that there is absolutely no security in Nigeria today. Whether it be the police, whether it be the customs, whether it be the immigration, whether it be the Nigerian army. Most of our police stations, or with due respect, most of our policemen work in tandem with adding criminals. Most of them are informants to adding criminals. Some of them like the defunct sir, who are directly engaged in all sorts of heinous uh, criminality. 
and the police stations have become, and also the market, where justice is traded on the platter of dirty wares. So you will have to reorganize the Nigerian police. You will have to reorganize the Nigerian army. You will have to reorganize the Nigerian custom. For example, we close the borders to achieve certain results. Ensure that the proliferation of arms uh, is a stop, that arms and ammunition don't get into the country again. And that smuggling of goods and services is a curtail. But did we achieve that result? We didn't achieve the result because the customs and exercise that we had without responsibilities has woefully failed the Nigerian um, a nation. You also have an army that has not been able to defeat a ragtag, a ragtag religious fundamentalist gorilla uh, army over a period of 10 years. And the lo and behold, the fundamentalists are getting more and more emboldened. They are mastering the terrain. They have also structured, they also have now a structured means of access to arms and ammunition. So if you have that kind of a challenge in your hand, how do you defeat that kind of um, uh, a gorilla army without a fundamental restructuring of the Nigerian nation? Oh. But lo and behold, that is a thing we are not prepared to do. Furthermore, more importantly, you and I will remember that before the advent of this civil war, we never had these serious challenges of the security in our country. The insecurity began when the different political parties, when the different individuals began to form their private armies, their military groups to compel and force the electorate to vote in certain directions and where they refused not to even vote at all. All those private armies, all those different military groups are well harmed, they are well financed, they are well funded. They are also people that the conventional security like the police and the army and the civil defense are too afraid to deal with because of their relationship with the politicians. So if All you right. want security in the country, Ole. you um, also let's... have to disband the different military groups uh, right. that have been established by the, by the politicians. All right, Let, let's turn from security matters now to another big story yeah. in Nigeria, and it's about this doctor strike. It's been on okay. since Thursday, okay. April 1st, and uh, the federal government here, we see Ingigi saying they will reopen talks with striking doctors and uh, stri striking resident doctors. But NAD on their part have said that they are not you know, entirely keen on negotiations because they've had lots of these before, but you know, the government failed to uh, basically fulfill their parts of the agreement. I don't know what you think you know, this would probably lead to because there have been talks on social media people sharing experiences about how they have you know loved ones with serious health conditions that can't get care at the moment hmm. well let's uh, kind of marry the strike that the judicial serve i said they'll be embarking upon from tomorrow with that of the medical uh, doctors. Truth of the matter is uh, when you go to the Nigerian hospitals today, especially the public hospitals, they are worse than glorified clinics that we used to describe them in the past. Hardly can you get any services I mean, done in those hospitals efficiently, smoothly, and timely. You also have to pay heavily for the inefficiencies that you'll find in some of these hospitals. Furthermore, the basic tools that the medical doctors, that the nurses, that the laboratory scientists, and the other allied workers have to work with are not there. The little emolument and salaries that the ordinary lay should be paid don't come timely because the country has gone bankrupt, and the Central Bank of Nigeria is merely printing money to pay people's salaries and buy services. Well, I would say 
just like I've always emphasized, uh, as it is good for us to agitate for our rights, to insist that government should do the right thing to all manners of its workers at the right time. We must also remember, like I've always been emphasizing, that uh, our cause will always be wishful thinking until we have had good governance in this country. All right. Uh, Every phase of our life are in a caca, in a rot. They are in decay. There is nothing that is functioning. For example, S still talking, still, uh, Mr. Tundekola, we're, yes. we're still talking healthcare here. There's a story on the Nigerian Tribune that says um, Serap is suing the president over his failure to uh, respond to the 3.8 billion Naira NAVDAC Health Ministry and Hospitals funds that are allegedly missing. Uh, can you also share your thoughts on that one? Well, well the, 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 the Sarah people are doing a very uh, good job. Uh, in all civilized societies, people are encouraged um, to use dialogue, conciliation, and uh, concessions, and uh, what have you, to resolve issues. And when that doesn't work, you go to, to ventilate your anger, and then the court or the judiciary will um, come up with a decision as regards the disputes between the parties. That is how civilized people should um, uh, behave. But from what we have seen in the past activities of setup and then government response to the decision or some of the decisions that setup has gotten in court, I am not too sure that the approach of setup has uh, been effective. It's like uh, a man knocking his head against the wall because the government has remained impervious to most of the decisions uh, that have come from our court and the yearnings and aspirations of our people. Uh, what this tells us is that uh, we might need to combine civil action with litigation if we are going to be achieving success, if we are going to be able to move the government of the day to really do the right thing, not just in relation to the NAVDAC uh, funds, but as it regards education, health, infrastructure, good governance, cutting down of the cost of democracy, and also moving the nation forward in the areas of security, stability, peace, and inclusive governance. Okay, Mr. Tinde Kolawale, Yes, we know yes. that over the weekend, we heard the very sad news about the demise of Yinka Odumaki, spokesperson of Afeni Ferry. And we've seen how national leaders, you know, the president, ex-president, Solushago Basonjo, you know, good luck, Jonathan, poured tribute, you know, to him. And uh, Joe Odumaki, his wife, is now saying she wished her husband could read tributes of those who he criticized. And she was talking about how, his, how it was important for us to celebrate people while they're alive, you know, and not uh, keep that off till, you know, they pass on. Um, let's get your comments on this, you know, shocking news about, you know, the demise of uh, Ying Hao Dumaki. Honestly speaking, the death of uh, Mr. Ying Hao Dumaki came to me as a very, very rude shock. Uh, one not a fathom that such a young man, such a vibrant mind, will pass away uh, this suddenly and very cheaply to an opportunistic um, a disease or virus. His uh, death has reminded me of that of Bamidele Aturu, fire-eating Nigerian lawyer who was in the forefront of uh, the fight for the rule of law good governance, and peace and stability for the Nigerian nation for so many days. What this tells us is that uh, this COVID thing is a reality. It's a reality that we all must pay attention to. The Nigerian people should begin to take precautions and uh, turn away from this uh, non-challenge attitude 
So the COVID pandemic, that it doesn't exist, that it is a disease for the big people, that uh, it's not a disease the black man ordinarily should um, be afflicted with. We have seen it happen to Yinka Otumaki. We have seen it happen to Bolu Akelubate. We have also seen it happen to the Tanzania uh, uh, president. For Yinka, he is a man who was with us in those days in the Marxist Leninist movement. He was a radical activist before he later in life became a religious uh, irredentist. And he wouldn't be the first um, radical thinker to become a religious irredentist. If you take a look at the history of the Nigerian socialist movement, of the progressive movement, of the radical movement, you would have seen that uh, so many people, just like Kinka, people like Gigi Dara, people like Komredola Oni, people like Baba Omojola, who once espoused very radical thoughts, uh, will later in life become religious um, irredentists. This tells us, or this um, is kind of making me ask the question, is there something about tribe? Is there something about nationhood that people like Inka Uduma King have seen? Right. So such an nature that they became spokesperson for Afeniferi rather than a campaigning on the level of uh, a nationalist that they used to be. Right. Would it be that um, the tribe is not a thing that you can wish away? If we take the example of what has happened in Britain, or what is happening in Catalonia, and what has happened with the Irish people, and what happened in the defunct uh, uh, Soviet Union. All right, All Mr. Kalawale, right. um, just to chip in there, um, the yeah. wife of uh, you know Yinka Odumaki had said that uh, he had recovered from coronavirus one week ago before he, he passed on. And also, uh, you know, to also mention, we also lost uh, a social activist, you know, Senchukuma, the uh, founder of Clean Foundation, also passed on uh, over the weekend. So, it, you know, it's, it's two very strong voices that the uh, country lost over the weekend. Um, we hope that, of course, uh, the uh, persons who continue to speak truth to power would uh, continue, you know, with the work that they do. Um, I, I want you to quickly also address, you know, the idea of Sheikh Gumi meeting with President Muhammad Dubois, um, sorry, pre former President Olusegun Um What are your, your thoughts of their meeting in the first place um, and, you know, the recommendations, you know, that came out of, of all of that? I know you had spoken a little bit about it before, you know, but you know, do you think or do you agree that it's all in good faith? You mean a specialized court or something? No, the, the, the meeting that they had in the first place and then their, their recommendations. I'm not too sure that um, the meeting that those people have had is going to address or solve any problems. Nigeria is not lacking in recommendations. I mean, uh, Dr. Gulag Jonathan organized a conference in which all areas of our life were well debated and recommendations were made. And since the return to this civil rule, we have had all manners of organizations making meetings and making recommendations and all that. But lo and behold, the people in government have remained impervious. So those recommendations, as soon as the recommendations are made and submitted to government, they are merely put in the archives after their so-called white paper has been written about it. That is if they ever bother at all to write any white paper on some of the recommendations that have been made to government. So my take is that uh, the wumbling and fumbling that is associated with the present governance will continue until 2023 without any of these recommendations whether coming from a passenger group or from Arewa or from Afeni Ferry, uh, without any government paying attention to them. And if care is not taken, the wumbling and fumbling 
we also continue after 2023 because I have not seen any alternative on ground now to so, the tragedy, the monumental tragedy that we have in our hands All right. with regards to our political class, with regards to our political system, with regards to our approach to the financing right, of you. this democracy, with That's regards to the way. collapse of the industry, with regards to massive unemployment, thank with regards much. to deplorable right. educational system, with regards to the decay in the hospitals and what have you. There, there's a lot of if these angles uh, having, that... Uh, will be having, uh, well, I, there's a lot of these angles that I believe, you know, would always uh, come up in our conversations here. And of course, uh, uh, maybe also more and more recommendations from past leaders and from uh, church leaders. Uh, but of course, I uh, would always be eager to speak on them. Thank you very much, Tunde Kolawale, for joining us and for mm -hmm. sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Yes, thank you. And have a great day. All right, seems it's gone. All right, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, we're moving to share with you. Uh, things that happened today, the 5th of April, many, many years ago in Today in History here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.